Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here uh, with a video that I wanted to do and I'm, this is a, a sort of something I'm trying so bear with me if I kind of blow it. Uh, but I wanted to try a multi-knife video and I want to call this knife Great Knife for a Great Price. And, and here's why. You know, I have some knives where I'm like, wow, this is a really, really cool, awesome knife. But I, I kind of paid a lot to get that awesome stuff. Or I have knives that go, yeah, that's a pretty good knife and I got it for a pretty good price. But every once in a while, you see a knife or you get a knife that uh, maybe your expectations aren't that high. So you go, yeah, I think it's a good knife. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in having it. But we'll see. And then it comes or then you pick it up in a store and you're like, wow, I can't believe how good this knife is. And so... Uh, those knives fall into the category, a great knife for a great price. And, and so that's what I'm going to do in this video. So that's that's the introduction. Let's go ahead and get into the knives. And the first one is one that's been talked about a whole lot in all kinds of areas. And probably many of you see this and you immediately know that this is an Ontario knife and it's a RAT Model 1. Uh, this knife is Aus 8 Steel. Uh, it's about five ounces, so it's a little heavy, big handle. And, and I've carried this knife for a long time, and I just love the, the size and weight of this knife. It's really a worker and just an outstanding knife. Uh, but the great thing about it, even though it's Aus 8 steel, by the way, if you saw the Kiko video, price of saw Kiko, it's not cheap. This is the same blade steel. Very good steel. Uh, very good grind. This is a full flat grind, uh, and it's a drop point blade. Just awesome. Jimping on the back of the knife. This is a great knife, and it's not expensive at all. Anyone uh, could easily afford this knife, uh, and the only drawback would maybe be its size and weight. Uh, and the weight is not bad. It's only five ounces. Uh, it is eight and a half inches long, so it's a big knife uh, at a small price, and that's what makes it a great knife for a great price. Uh, before I move on, and I still got the Ontario knife out, I want to say the Utilitac, which is also by Ontario, seems to have very similar features to this, just a different blade shape, different knife shape overall. Uh, and I would suspect that it would fall into the same category, although I don't own one. I, I'm kind of speculating there. I'm going to say that's going to be a pretty good knife as well. Uh, the next knife I want to show you is another big knife. It's one that's been highly, highly reviewed. Uh, and it's all over YouTube. This is the Bird Cara Cara. Uh, it's 8CR13 MOV. It is as well eight and a half inches long. So again, a big knife. Now, if you like a big knife like that, but would like something a little lighter and easier to carry, this is only four ounces. Uh, so it's amazing. Uh, and that's why I, I every time I pick this knife up, I just cannot get over how big much blade you're getting, how big and functional this knife is uh, for a, a small package. It carries very easily in your pocket. You'd never know you have it. It doesn't weigh much. It doesn't cost much. I mean, you know, all the, it's small in all the ways that a knife should be small and it's big in all the ways that a knife should be big. Uh, so just an outstanding knife. And this is one of those knives that I really like to carry. And I do carry it a lot, even though it's sitting in a drawer beside knives that cost twice as much uh, and, uh, you know, maybe have that extra cool factor. Uh, I carry this knife a lot because it's just a really awesome knife. Certainly qualifies as a great knife for a great price. That's the Bird Cara Cara. This one is G10. It, all comes, it also comes in FRN. Uh, and this is not a review, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. But this is a great knife. And, it, and the other thing is, if you're kind of interested in the Spyderco Enduro, which is an expensive knife, uh, this knife is almost the exact same shape, same size, same weight, same functioning. Uh, so you could pick this knife up and decide, yeah, I like it or maybe I don't like it. And if you really like this knife, but you'd like to have it in uh, slightly higher quality materials, Throw this thing back on eBay or Kijiji or Amazon or whatever. Get rid of it and uh, upgrade to the Endura. Or stick this in a backpack or a car knife or something where you're not going to use it. But you'll know if you like that, you'll like the Endura as well. Uh, now, the next knife is smaller. And I think it's the smallest of the knives we're going to look at. But maybe not. Uh, this knife has been on YouTube a lot. Uh, and it is the Buck Vantage. This thing is one of those knives where I got it because it wasn't very expensive 
and because everyone seems to recommend this knife. I, I can't believe how many YouTube videos there are about this knife and how many people who make the videos go, wow, I can't believe this is a great knife. And now there's one more. Uh, this is a great knife. And I kind of got it kind of thinking, I like it and uh, I want to try it out. And it was recommended to me by a couple of different people. So I thought, sure, let's let's try, you know, at least one buck knife in my collection. I can't believe how many people I've said, oh, yeah, I kind of am interested in knives. And they say, do you have a buck knife? And I said, no. So, you know, finally I said, OK, I'm going to have to get a buck knife. And uh, the Vantage Select was the one I went with because it's cheap and because everyone who says anything about it highly recommends it. Um, I know there are stories of centering issues on these knives, so I'm like, I don't really want to buy the $100 Vantage Force Pro and it's not centered or there's blade play or something. So, so this is a pretty safe bet. But here's what happened. This knife came and I picked it up and I started using it and started carrying it around. And I, every time I touch this knife, I cannot get over how awesome it is for such a small price. It's not an expensive knife at all, and yet it's outstanding. Uh, and one of the things that needs to be mentioned is this blade is, I'm going to have to check my notes, uh, 420HC. There we go. 420HC steel, which is supposedly a cheap steel, which is probably why Buck can produce this knife so cheaply. But then they have this way of heat treating the blade that makes it perform really, really well. Uh, so you have a cheap steel with certain blade geometry and certain heat treatment that kind of push that steel up into the same category as, you know, the OS8 from this guy or the 8CR13 MOV from this guy. Uh, now you add uh, this Buck heat treated 420HC, uh, which wouldn't normally be as good as those blades, but because of the way Buck does it, it ends up being that good. Uh, so I don't know, the, like this is just an amazing knife. I, every time I pick it up, as I said, I can't, I go, wow, yeah, this knife is awesome. I can't believe it was like 20 bucks. Uh, so Buck Vantage Select deserves to be on this, le this list. And anyone who's going, you know, I'd like to have a knife just to carry every day in my pocket. You could not lose with the Buck Vantage Select. Uh, the next knife that I want to show you is a little bit special and maybe a little bit unique to those of us who are Canadian. This is the Camillus. Now, it's horrible because this knife does not have a name. So you could sort of say the same complaint that sometimes people say about Charade. Why can't they name their knives? And this one definitely, definitely needs a name because of the way they call it. Uh, so this knife is the Camillus 8.25 inch carbonitride titanium folding knife. Uh, yeah, that's a mouthful, and they really need to say, like, this is the Camillus whatever. Just give it a name so that when people are doing videos about it, they can call it something without going through this stupid long name. Uh, now, this knife is, it has all the stuff that you want in a folding knife. Uh, it's eight and a quarter inches. It's got a pocket clip. Now, it's single position pocket clip, G10 handle, uh, and none of those things put it in this crazy knife, great knife for a great price. The blade is what does that. I'm going to see if I can get this close enough for you to see. You can see two little letters there and a number. V, G, 10. The blade on this knife is V, G, 10 steel, which is a steel you normally find on very expensive knives. Uh, the Spyderco Delica and Endura use V, G, 10 steel and uh, they're both considerably more expensive than this knife, uh, especially here in Canada. Uh, now, here's the note that I have to make about this. For some reason, in Canada, this is a super affordable knife. Like, I think it's $44 on Amazon. So very, very cheap. Yet, I looked on Blade HQ somewhat recently, and I think it was about 60 bucks. I remember just thinking, I cannot believe that's so expensive in the US. Uh, I'm not sure why. In the, the Endura and the Delica are both the opposite. You know, if you buy a Delica here, that's about a $70 knife. Uh, an Endura is like a $110 knife in Canada. Then there's this, same blade steel, uh, very, very, very good steel, $44. Uh, and I'm pretty well, I'm pretty confident. Now I could be wrong because I don't know of every knife that's ever been made and I don't know that anyone does know that. But, uh, 
I think this is probably the best steel you can get for your money in any knife. So this knife is a little more, uh, it's $44, uh, and uh, that's more than all the other knives I've shown. The other knives I've shown have been like $20 to $30. Uh, this knife is more. But for what you're getting, this is a full-size folding knife, and the blade is VG10. Now, I'm going to do a full review on this knife uh, later on, but uh, it's gonna, it had to make this video because it's almost unbelievable. Uh, I really, uh, you know, I saw this knife and, and I was really like, I can't believe it only cost $44. Uh, and so I even did some research. I was like thinking, surely something's wrong with it. It's a factory second. It's, you know, the, the, the Camillus makes the most worthless knives ever and just can't put it, you know, none of those things are true. It's a good knife with great steel, and I mean great steel, and it's only $44. So it made the list, even though it costs a little more, because of the outstanding blade steel. And the last knife is going to stand in for all of the knives in this 300 category. So the, the charade, uh, this is the 307, SCH 307. Uh, there's a bunch of these knives. There's like a 301, 302, 304, 303, and that's not 303 British. Uh, 307, 308, and maybe there is even more coming that I just don't know about. Uh, but uh, everything that I can find about these 300 series charades uh, just says they're awesome and they're so cheap. Uh, you know, if you need a knife, now I'm not going to recommend you carry this in your pocket every day, but if you need a knife for camping, for putting in a backpack or in a tackle box or in a car or in a tool belt, uh, Man, for 20 bucks, even if you lose it, who cares? Like this is the knife, you know, you take ice fishing in case you drop it down the hole and it's, you're not really sacrificing anything in terms of ability uh, other than it's heavy. So you may fall through the hole with it. Uh, but those are the knives. So uh, to go in the order that I think I showed them, I may get this out of order. Ontario Rat Model 1 is a great knife for a great price. The Bird Cara Cara, great knife for a great price. Buck Vantage Select, great knife for a great price. Uh, Camillus, uh, eight and a half inch, eight and a quarter inch uh, carbonitride titanium folding knife, great knife for a great price. There are a couple, I think there's a smaller version of this, but. Uh, I just don't like small knives. So great knife, especially great blade steel for a great price. And the charade, charade, man, detent's a little stiff on that one. Uh, charade SCH 307 or all the 300 series, great knives for a great price. So that's the video. I, I hope that's a little entertaining for you. And, and part of it is just sharing my experience and, and uh, you know, some of the excitement that I get over finding just a really awesome knife and, and getting what I feel like is a great deal on it. Not all the knives that I have are like that. Some knives, you particularly want something, you really like a design feature or you really like uh, a designer or a blade shape or something, so you pay a little extra to get that. Uh, and that's that's fine. If when, when you're a collector, that's part of collecting, right? Someone who pays $200 for a teacup teacup doesn't do it because it'll hold tea better than the teacup at Dollarama. They do it because they're interested in that. Uh, and the same is true of knives. But these knives are all outstanding in terms of value. So great knife, great price. That's the video and talk to you soon.